Now I'll invite our four panellists to all come up and uh, join us as I uh, tell you about them. Uh, first up, Vanessa Hunt has been both sides of the fence. Now, Vanessa is currently Director of Commercial Strategy and Growth at ARN. She also spent five years with Group M and before that led mobile strategy at Yahoo 7 back when that was a thing. And as I was writing that note, I wasn't sure when I said back when that was a thing, whether I meant Yahoo 7 or mobile strategies. So you'll have to decide for yourself <laughs> about that. Next along, Ollie Newton is executive head for Listener Commercial at SCA. He joined Hi. last year. Before that, spent more than 15 years in out of home, leading sales for JC Deco. Yeah. Next along, Nicole Bentz is Chief Commercial Officer at Nova. She returned to Nova last year after five years with Seven West Media and earlier in her career she was also Sales and Strategy Director at News Corp. And Ash Earnshaw is Director of Sales for Total Audio, although I always feel like it should be Total Audio. <laughs> Uh, for some reason, whenever I see Good that. Good job, title. <laughs> now, like Ness, Ash has been agency side, including as CEO at Visium and as Chief Investment Officer for what is now known as Dentsu, along with Mediacom. Now, let's get into the, our first question, because we, we, we do have less than half an hour, which is, um, I guess the conversation really is, um, uh, I guess we're talking about people in this one. And in this case, we're really talking about uh, about what media agencies and 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 I guess by by the logic the advertisers want. So we we we're trying to get to that point of um, what an agency planner buyer is looking for in audio nirvana. Um, you know, how does how do you have an informed conversation? What are the questions that you get asked? Um, how that planning conversation goes at the moment um, and how those decisions change from other channels. So I think we will start with the ex-agency execs. Now, Ness, you're nearest to me, so I might come to you. <laughs> I feel like this is a dangerous seat nearest to you, if I'm <laughs> Well, it is, and I, and I promise it won't be like tennis where we go back and forth <laughs> along the panel all, um, all morning as well. But yeah, um, Ness, let's, let's drill into it. What, what do your partners want? If I, if I think about... What's, I'll start with what's wrong, that's very not like me. I'll start with what's wrong and then go to what's right. I think the media industry in general, the advertising industry, is really complicated. We don't have three television stations and two radio stations anymore. It's really complex and it's really fragmented. And a standard media buyer has a million decisions to make, not three like they used to. So the first is what does Nirvana look like is really taking a minute to understand and appreciate the complexity that a media planner buyer now has in an agency in comparison to even 15 years ago where it was much simpler. Um, and so Nirvana for me looks like somebody that actually has curiosity and that understands a little bit more around behavioural psychology. And I know that sounds terrifying for all the right reasons, but understanding why a consumer is doing something, understanding why they're going to change their mind, make a decision, hear your product, whatever it might be, is actually the most important bit in advertising now, far more than the end point because it's so complicated. So um, we're going to talk a lot around digital and broadcast and what that looks like and the mixture between the two, but there is an incredibly big difference between why you would put something on the plan. And so if I think about what Nirvana looks like as a media planner buyer, it's understanding the reasons why things are on the plan got a very complicated way to get to a very simple point, but I think we've missed that a lot in the industry lately where we tend to plan like we used to when it was very, very simple ecosystem. Ash, your ex-agency as well. Do you recognise that point about curiosity? I do. I, I, I'm, I'm never going to lose the ex-agency thing either. <laughs> thing. I think, I mean, for, for me, I've been out of agencies for um, a number of years, and I think the first thing in my observation is um, the landscape has accelerated massively in audio uh, in a really good way. So I think things have changed for the better. I think um, you spoke about kind of Nirvana. I think some of the conversations we're having, I think first thing, um, many of the agencies have been going out to market with their, um, their new kind of planning frameworks and stuff. And I think everyone is absolutely set to embrace some of the things you're hearing today. I think for me with audio, I think for our team certainly, and some, some of our teams are here today, I think it really starts in the briefing stage. Like what are the insights in the brief? Um, you know, it, it's beyond demographics and a really clear objective. And I think the people um, in the market who are doing it best are, are, are convergent in their thinking. Because I think now it's difficult, you've got to walk and chew gum, but there's, there's an awful lot to think about 
uh, when it comes to cross-platform, cross but also audio. I do think um, those people in the market, and we saw some wonderful stats from Paul and the team just now, those that are doing it best are really thinking in an audience-centric way. Like where is, where is um, content being consumed? Um, where are our audiences? Where's the opportunity? And I think it's well established, and hopefully some of you will come away realizing today, there's a huge gap between the audiences across all our platforms um, and, and the place that we have in a brand's media mix. So I think that's, that's interesting. I think when you go into audio, I think audience isn't everything, right? So, you, you know, we have to look at the opportunity. Those that are doing it best, and Nirvana in agencies, really is um, not throwing the baby out with the bathwater. So, Lauren spoke before about uh, the wonderful world of radio. So, many of the brands in here really embrace what radio does well, integrating into our platforms, into the, whether it's the premium we've got, the sport. But I think increasingly, Nirvana really is um, having a look at the both the audiences and the product sets that sit within our digital stream radio and our podcasts. And I think what has happened, um, certainly since I've been out of agencies, has been a massive shift in terms of both consumption, but also some of the wonderful things that you can do with digital stream radio and podcasting, which really makes radio a full, a full funnel, I can't say it, full funnel solution, right? So I think that's the important bit. I think within that as well, um, sweating it out, like put our money where our mouth is and asking some of us about what we can do from an impact perspective. And many of us have got solutions around that. We work with Near, for example, from a location perspective. We can map the investment in streaming into going in store or, you know, or, or, or purchase it at the till. And there's many solutions. So I think that full funnel approach is Nirvana for me. Um, I, would, I would say that's not the, the consistent norm in the industry. And probably hear from everyone today going, that's where we want to get to. I think we can get there really quickly, but we're not there yet. Nicole, trading Nirvana, how does it look? Um, look, I personally have a little bit of an issue with the word Nirvana because having it's a great um, band, though. Yeah. spent time in total <laughs> video, um, everybody asked for Nirvana. It took five years and it was a really frustrating experience, I think, for both the buy and the sell side. So, you know, I think fundamentally audio has got growth. I think, I mean, you talked about it, like podcasting is an amazing opportunity to bring new people into the ecosystem that probably will and never have listened to radio. You know, the unique vo voices, the diversity of content, all of that stuff is amazing. Streaming makes it borderless. Um, you know, I'm, I've been fascinated just looking at our own stuff. I'm sure, you know, the guys are the same. Like, the, the growth in regional audiences without necessarily having a regional network is, is pretty cool. Um, but I think the question is, do we want to progress or do we want to be perfect? Yeah. And I think, you know, nested at the curiosity, the leaning in, 10 out of 10 for everyone who's here today. Like, I think, you know, we are in a really interesting time where we've got fundamentally what people want, audience growth. Now we just got to work out how do we, you know, support particularly the agencies and clients in leveraging our first party data, working with panel data, working with what we've got to try and unpick something that shouldn't be complex. I loved Ford's comment where he said that um, technology is pulling consumers in, not pushing them away, which is unique to us. So let's not let perfection get in the way of progress. Well, Ollie, we will look at the non-perfection real world in a moment. First <laughs> so, of all... Just, just one pick up. Ashley, did you say the briefing process has improved since you left agencies? <laughs> it's changed. <laughs> okay, so I just wanted to say that. <laughs> I think... Not um, associated. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I need to move back a little bit. <laughs> no, um, no, I, th I think the, the point like Vanessa made, there's, there's a huge amount of fragmentation going on. Um, agencies are incredibly time poor. You know, there's a perception that you have a, you know, a yearly upfront, but the reality is that that's not going to work because the technology available is changing all the time. And for, for me, Nirvana is an agency going, okay, this is, <clears throat> this is the data we've got, this is the data our advertisers got, this is what they're looking for, and actually it's building a full funnel response, anything from awareness... If anyone's doing bingo and has funnel, you're winning already. <laughs> full funnel. Full it's said funnel. four times. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Surprised. So I think, I think the point is that it's, it's a real balancing act, you know, the word perfection, because the reality is that we're all building really smart, sleek tech products, and it's, it's a really tough job trying to get in front of an agency and really push those because, you know, a really key call out is that the audience in radio isn't declining. It, podcasting and streaming is going on top of that. And I think there's this natural perception that, TV, that because the TV audience is declining, that people automatically assume radio is as well. And it's a, it's a massive job to do to, to keep pushing that and going, okay, someone's got a brief. How does that all layer up from a branding point of view? You know, you go traditional with, with, with an audio kind of radio, and then it's like, what does streaming do on top, and what does podcasting do on top of that? Lolly, I'll stick with you for a moment. As Nicole has alluded to, we, 
we haven't achieved perfection yet, um, and ask everybody to give a mark out of 10 for where we are, <laughs> um, and also tell me... Um, we as yes. in the whole industry? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Like yes, we as an industry yeah. as a whole, yes. I'm a six. <laughs> 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 I, I, I think it varies. I see some briefs that I think are awesome, um, and I see some briefs where I go, that's a really time point. Well, I'm going I'm to ask for examples of the good and the bad, but I'm also going to push you to give me a mark out of 10 overall. Six and a half. Six and a half out of yeah. 10. Okay. Example of what's going well, example of what needs to be done better. What's going well, I think all of the agency kind of annual partnership conversations are all asking for help. They're all asking for a roadmap. They're all asking for what does you know what is the data um, opportunity, um, and they're all asking us to educate the teams. I think that's great, um, but I also think back to Ness's point that um, if we if we confuse the market too much with the capability, then um, we're probably going to trip over ourselves. Um, so I think it's a real fine line in terms of kind of pushing what the next 12 to 18 months look like for digital audio. Um, but also, I think we, we, we've got to make sure everyone fully understands those basic principles of what's going on from an audience point of view. Mm. Nicole, going to push you for a number. Um, I, and genuinely, I mean it, like, thank you to everyone who's made the time and effort today because, uh, like, 10 out of 10 for the leaning in and curiosity, you know, I really mean that. Um, I think, much like Ollie, probably in the sixes as far as where we're actually at right now, and I think a lot of that is because... We are asking people to do things different and I think no one sitting on this stage is under any illusion how time poor both the buy and the sell side is. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, through the, through the next season, the like, ongoing sort of sentiment around, um, you know, we're asking more of our people to step out of the rinse and repeat behaviour, to yeah. try new things, to get curious. But, um, you know, there's the reality of how much time mm. there is to do that on both sides. Um, so I think, you know, the, as I said, genuine curiosity, yes. Okay. Where have we seen the most progress? Still to you, Nicole. Um, I think for us, we are definitely just starting to see more acceptance of our data to be able to show how we can optimise audiences. Um, you know, we've, we've just worked with an FMCG client. Um, we've just expanded them into Coles Radio. You know, it's... 30 plus percent incremental reach for no more money. So, you know, that's not necessarily having a gold standard third party verified measurement system to be able to talk to that. But we've got footfall traffic, we've got attribution data from Coles. It's high quality data, but it doesn't fit in a box. Ness, marks out of 10, please. Oh, I was joking about a six before, but now I feel like I should say six because everyone else has said a six. <laughs> yeah, the safe place to say when they say out of 10 is seven because it means fuck all. Um, but uh, so seven uh, is where we're at as an industry. But I think if we're looking at what's done right and um, still needs improvement, um, what's done right, I think, is is the shift to people understanding that the audio or the, the um, additional audio or incremental opportunity on the plan, you know, the guys have, I've mentioned it a few times before, but we're not having a digital migration. Um, we're having a completely incremental new audiences, new listening experiences. Whereas in other mediums, whether that be television migrating into a BVOD scenario or whether that be digital uh, out of home moving into you had a static billboard before you now you've got a digital one, we don't have that problem in audio. The radio audiences are increasing as well as incremental audiences. And I think that's starting to shift and change. You know, alluding to some of the agency conversation we've had already, our completely video obsessed inventory, uh, industry, sorry, is now starting to go, oh, hang on a minute. Mm. That's getting really expensive to do. And inflation in social is insane. It's sitting at around about 35 to 40% in inflation for a biddable media, which I just think is, you control your own inflation and you're still choosing to do that is, is insane. Um, and so people are going, how am I gonna consistently and, st and stably grow my brand without having these huge inflations of 25% on television and 45% social. Mm. Um, and so I think the conversation is being forced to change. Um, so that's nice to see. Uh, that sounds negative, but it's actually a positive. It's nice to see the change. I think where we still have um, differences is we talk about digital being like incremental reach. Um, and that's just a habit. It's a bad habit that we've, uh, we've in, 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 I guess, got from other mediums, um, where it's not really about incremental reach. That can be part of the reason that you buy it, um, but back onto that mindset. What are people doing differently? Like, I don't know about you guys, but the way that I listen to the radio in the car in the morning is very different to why I listen to a podcast on a walk or it might be a, a streaming music playlist at the gym. <laughs> Let's be honest, I don't go to the gym. Um, 
maybe when I'm angry or something else when I'm listening to some, some pretty um, hardcore rock. They're all very different reasons. And for a brand to show up in those areas are really, really different. And I think what we've still got to do as an industry is understand those differences rather than going, you know, 30% of my audience has now moved to digital. So I'll split my $10 and go seven and three. It should be my $10 stays where I was because the audience isn't decreasing and I'm going to go and do something different with my yep. other money. And I think to add to that, yep. sorry, Jim, I think, I don't know how you feel, Ness, but I just feel like digital audio, it's like not all digital audio is equal. No. no. And I do think we are in a world at the minute right now where it's sort of everyone is putting it into a digital audio bucket. That's yeah. a really good point. I think, yeah, the, yeah. the point you make, Nicole, and the point you make, Vanessa, about, you know, the, the, the nature of listening to a podcast is a different experience. We'll Absolutely. come back to that in a second because I just want to bring Ash back in first and then we'll come back to that. You're going to make one. me score. Yeah, thing? give me a score. Well, I, I'm an eternal optimist, so whatever anyone said, I'm going to add a one to it. So I think, I think we're, we're probably better than we are. I think what I find insightful at the moment... Where's the is number? The, is the, uh, what I find insightful <laughs> is the gap between probably what an eight. eight. He hasn't given me an eight. <laughs> I, I, think, I think at the moment what's it's interesting the is the gap between knowledge. the capability that exists in this room and the, probably the perception in market. And what I find brilliant about today is, uh, to Nicole's point, is there's real leaning from the market. And we do feel that. So, you know, some of the biggest, the biggest conversations we had with partners um, across earlier in the year, um, most of those partners are really interested, certainly in the Holdco's, in elevating their digital product suite, leaning in on programmatic and understanding um, what the opportunities are in audio. So I think, I think at the moment it's about bridging um, that gap between the, the opportunity that exists um, across all businesses and obviously nine, but I think within that, um, working with the market to kind of level up. I do think also um, that we are at the stage now that BVOD was at probably in about 2018. Yeah. Um, the product suite is there for us all. With a much uh, better ad experience. Yeah, uh, you know, and, and, and people, <laughs> obviously people like Nicole coming over into the industry um, to kind of give us that insight around it. But from a nine perspective, uh, when, when BVOD really took off, um, the ability, obviously, to target with data, um, to demonstrate the incremental reach. We haven't spoken about Radio 360, but I think it's an absolute game changer for us all. Mm -hmm. What made BVOD uh, wonderful was a, a, the simple um, observation around incremental reach. Now with Radio 360, we can all understand those that are consuming um, live radio and digital audio, but also the, both the incremental opportunity, um, but then the targeting opportunity in terms of scale. So I do think this year um, there's a massive opportunity, and I think within that, where we've got to grow from the sixes and the sevens is probably around automation and bringing together all this audience capability and making it easy for everyone in this room to buy. Mm. Excellent, thank still you. Still didn't give a number. No, he did. I, gave um, himself eight. It's gave eight. himself an eight. Eight. <laughs> gave himself yeah. eight. Yeah. Someone gets to be the optimist, don't they? <laughs> uh, Nicole, let's build up on that previous point a bit. The, the, the difference in how one, from a planning perspective or a trading perspective, thinks about let's call it traditional broadcast versus streaming versus podcasting, quite, quite really quite different buckets for one yeah. better word. Um, how would you like the industry or how would you urge the industry to think about it? Um, look, there's lots, but I mean, everyone will have a point on this, but I think, you know, tapping into Ness's behavioral piece. Um, I often get asked a lot around whether an ad played in Fitzy Whipper and Kate in the morning on a traditional linear clock radio, if anyone still has those, has as much impact on the person listening to it as if they got out of bed, walked downstairs and said, hello, Google, play me 969 and heard the same ad. <laughs> and um, I, I'm not even going to answer that because I think we can all sort of sit there and say, you know, yes, it is the same content listened to at the same time. Um, it's the same environment. If you love radio and you, be, you know, buy live and local, you buy talent, all those sorts of things, then the device doesn't necessarily matter. Um, I think, again, to Nessa's point, you know, I had a conversation this week where, um, you know, we were sort of talking about the quality of inventory and, you know, like, obviously, insert X social media platform on mobile has a really low attention score. Yeah, audio is the same. And I'm like, well, it's actually not. Like, if you're walking around the park listening to a podcast that's solving a problem for you, you are more leaned in and intimate on that experience but I do think there's, you know, again, sorry, Ness, I'm pulling on you, but I think there's just a lot of assumptions we're making based on what we've learned in other channels. And I really think we've got to, we've got to you know, the, the true definition of curiosity right is kind of being really open-minded. Um, and I think that's what we've sort of got to do in that space. Yeah, can I, if I can just build on that, I mean, the, the point we're trying to make is like, no one buys 
the pair of Nikes at the same time, right? Some people buy them when they hear it on the radio. Some people buy it when they're listening to a podcast talking about trail running. Some people buy it when they're streaming music, listening to it that way. And we've got to get to a point as an industry where we're giving confidence that we can help advertisers become more efficient in that point. Right. And go that like it, that's that's the next frontier is to go working with people and their customer data platforms to understand how we can keep building that efficiency and showing that different people react to different ads at different times. Mm. I would I would add a really easy way or a really practical way to think about on the plan. So we can sit up here and talk about all of the great things that we should be doing, but a really practical thing to do is take a brief that you have or a product that you're selling, depending on which side that you're sitting on, and graph it out. Graph it out and go, what do I want out of this? Brand and performance, and I want to speak to one to one, and I want to speak to one to many, right? And then even within that graph, you would have 50 audio products that fit into different quadrants. You know, to go, okay, I want, I'll give you an, an example of a car company. Let's use Ford, and this is not a real example. This is just an example to demonstrate the point. If there's a new Mustang coming, right? You want to speak in a broadcast environment where you want to tell as many people as possible and you probably want to do a brand job. So you'd be in that quadrant, right? You'd go, okay, well, what sits in that quadrant? And then as you go through your media objectives, you'll end up at some point asking for a test drive, right? Or you want someone to go into a car lot, in which case you're in the bottom box. You're in that one-to-one -one using data, using the ability to be able to target more efficiently and you want an outcome, so in that performance space, right? So if you think they're the two extremes in one client, they're completely different audio products you would use yeah. for each of those. You know, you might use a radio product for that broadcast one uh, t to many or that, you know, brand um, environment. And then you might use a podcast one-to-one -one in the earphones. You might use sequential targeting depending on, you know, the data capability that you have. And you come down to actually go, okay, now I can speak to them in a different way. And so I think the simplest and most, like, practical thing you can do is analyse the plan that you have to go, have I put the quadrants in the right spot? Or have I just gone, mm. I use radio for that, I'll use digital for that too and just yeah. do a reach extension? Because if you have, you've got it in the wrong quadrant. Mm. Something I want to quickly pick up on, Ash. Um, you made um, a point earlier that one of the benefits for video has been BVOD gave so much more data. Um, the parallels of BVOD, though, because it, it feels like the audience path in digital audio is quite different. To what's happened in BVOD. Why? Well, it is. I mean, the, I think BVOD, I have to tread very carefully when I discuss BVOD. Ask the, ask the guy. But I think <laughs> from a BVOD perspective, um, I'll have a go. obviously, yeah, yeah. The, obviously <laughs> the owned apps for all the major networks. So everyone was, everyone was logged in and viewing, or most were logged in early days, um, logged in and viewing on those platforms. So the incremental benefit was really clear, and it wasn't obviously part of the um, Austin measurement. If you contrast that with, with audio, Clearly, from a measurement perspective, we didn't have as clear insight back then. And I think, you know, one of the questions we get asked is about, you know, what, why are we, why we, why we not this, at the scale that the BVOD's at? I think the simple answer to that was we, we needed to um, do better in measurement. And I think, you know, from a CRO perspective with GFK, uh, we've done that. So you look at what's happened with Radio 360, that creates the conditions that BVOD had where we can show that incrementality. Similarly, back in um, the early 2010s, gosh, you know, it was pretty, pretty fundamental and simple to replace your TV set. Low cost of entry, people watching TV. From an audio perspective, you think about the um, switching of cars, the proliferation of technology, that technology was slow to develop, but has ramped through COVID. And I think there's more to come with that. If we look at the um, amount of connected devices in houses in Australia, it's ramping massively, but it's still behind the US. So, you know, again, audio audiences are growing. They will continue to grow because there's more listening occasions. I think... Um, from a BVOD perspective, it was different back then. Um, but I think now, because we've got conditions with measurement, because the product suite is there, um, I think it's a game changer in terms of um, data-led targeting in streaming. Yeah. I think for, you know, have a look at the audiences. They're absolutely huge across all our networks and in podcasting. Um, and at nine, um, I'm always astounded by the pace of change in terms of our product suite. So, you know, a year ago, we can't do what we do now. Even six months ago, whether it's programmatically, being able to buy... Um, our digital audio um, uh, pro pro programmatic, that's, that's shifted. Now we can do that. And that's across podcasting and streaming. So products like, uh, we have a product called AP Plus. That's a data-led product now across all audio and podcasting. It's giving the scale um, that brands say they want, but also it's giving that data piece. Can I just go back to the scoring side of things? Because I think I've been given eight because we only have he's, five he's minutes. That's just one point that for, the, well, for the group to build on then. Yeah. I think we've done a really good job in um, 
radio and digital at some level being on the media plan, you look at all our customer account, yeah. I think the challenge is the muscle memory around Spotify. Because the, the opportunity is, I think, those larger budgets going to Spotify, I think that's the six. Well, let's, you know, and I think, um, let's, know, I think that's the opportunity. I, I want to bring in a few of the other panel as well. Let, Ash, let me, um, let me pause you for one moment. And Ollie, let me bring you in on the Spotify point. Um, yeah, I mean... How does the industry <laughs> think about Spotify? From the guy well, that used to work at Amazon. This is so much fun. <laughs> The, the reality is, I mean, everyone, when they're listening to their favorite kind of playlist on a weekend, like, hands up in the room, I'm not going to embarrass anyone's listening to the ads. Like, they're not. You only ever have a party once and listen yeah. to the ads. Yeah. Then. So, and there's a, there's a huge grey area on the audience numbers, right? So, I, I think... The difference between users versus addressable audience. Yeah. Advertising address. And, and it's a massive area. And, and from, a, from a listener point of view, you, you cannot buy Hamish and Andy from, from Spotify. But I don't think Spotify is telling the market that. Hmm. But I think it, it's just, it's the revenue versus the listening too, right? So I think first mover advantage, muscle memory, all those things you said, um, they've definitely captured the market. And I think if we're all to sit there and go, what is it they've got? They've got data, they've got scale. But I mm. think, you know, in the conversations I'm having in market at the moment, the targeting campaigns are not delivering. Yeah. The scale is not there. Um, they're getting 80 cents in every dollar and yet they've got 40, 45% of the listening. This is in streaming I'm talking about. So, you know, I think, as Ash said, we're all growing our data, you know, we're all growing our products now, we've, we've, we're, we're, we're past the toddler stage, I think we're uh, definitely in the teenager, yeah. young adult stage now, and I think, you know, we can compete, but I think we are in that rinse and repeat behaviour, mm. um, and that's up to us, you know, we've, we've, we've got to do a better job. Okay, last question for everybody on the panel, and that's I'm going to start with you. What's I'm next? going to take exactly three minutes so no one else can say anything. <laughs> what, what's next and where does the conversation go from here? What's next? I think, I mean, I'm really, really hoping that everybody goes and has a look at their plan. <laughs> That's what I'm really, really hoping is, is the one thing that happens next, as in right now. Um, but what I think happens over the next 12 months is that we, as an industry, start to talk differently about all audio. Um, I think we have incredibly, all have incredibly healthy broadcast businesses. And I, this, is, this is something I'm really tr trying to make very clear. We were in a place where we defended that. We defended the broadcast business and we kind of went, oh, that radio thing over there, don't look too shiny. And we let Spotify run away with the digital arm um, really 10 years ago. Um, and we're not that companies anymore. And I think the myths around the companies and the progression, the product suite that Ash talked to, you know, all of that capability, we need to shout it from the rooftops so that people understand um, that we're not the businesses we used to be and that we're all uh, have much more uh, ability and capability in a very modern media world. Ollie, same question to you. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, I'm going to say something slightly controversial. I, personally, I don't really care about the digital market share performance of listener within the CRA because the reality is that, that, that it's got the capability to grow the overall pie. And in order to do that, we've got to plot a very clear roadmap in terms of how we open up the tech capability to, to, to take those bigger budgets from Spotify and from other areas of the digital ecosystem. And do you think that means acting as an industry as a whole or as individual I, I think it's a bit of both. I, I think we've got to compete. I think we've got to bring out products that we know are going to push each business to open ourselves up to new revenue streams. I think the UID is a great initiative, but I don't think that's enough. I think everyone's got to come up with a very clear strategy of how to grow the overall pie. Nicole, what's next? Um, yeah, look, I'm similar. I think, you know, radio investment sat at whatever it is, sort of 8% for a long time. Um, I think we're all guilty on this stage, some more than others, of investing a lot of money in growing audiences and not valuing them, yeah. giving them away for free. Um, you know, I think we should all be very grateful that our medium continues to grow audiences and I think we should be focused, as Ollie said, on the bigger pie and not so much about, you know, the CRA share, but thinking yep. about the greater opportunity for all of us to grow our businesses and help everyone in the room, you know, really unlock the full value of what it is that I think Total Audio can do. Ash, you get the final word. Yeah, I think, I mean, if we look back 10 years ago, it was interesting the analogy about the, the clock by your bed, but uh, 10 years ago, uh, from a radio perspective, we, we listened on um, an analogue device, and I think in 10 years' time, um, and potentially sooner, most listening will be digital. Mm. So if we think about where we're heading, we are, we are ramping up at significant pace around the digital ecosystem. Uh, and I think within that, um, you know, brand, the brands that we've got will continue to evolve in terms of our data, data play. I think audiences will continue to listen to audio. Uh, we've spoken about Spotify, but again, one thing I know to be true, whether it's across radio or live stream, or indeed in podcast, 
um, it's a human truth that everyone wants to connect with hosts and the role they play in their lives, and, and music won't change that. So I That's think an excellent point to end on, and that is where we're going to have to end it. Please, <laughs> thank oh, Vanessa, Ollie, Nicole, and Ash. Thank you. <laughs>